Why does Leith have liquid water in its oceans? In another video I stated that Leith is too far away from Kerbal to have liquid water. I made the statement that the surface temperature of Leith should be around 128 Kelvin. What I forgot to say is that this is what the temperature should be if the only heat source is Kerbal. The conclusion that I should have followed with is this. The result from this equation shows that Kerbal on its own does not provide enough heat and does not explain the liquid water in Leith's oceans. What I also left out is how I exactly calculated this 128 Kelvin, which I will show now. We start off by grabbing the equation of the total output of a star through black body radiation. Then we rewrite this into the fraction that another body receives from that star. This is the cross section area of the planet that receives the light and this is the area on which all the star's light is being spread out at that distance. If we equate the energy another body receives to the energy that it radiates off, also through black body radiation, then we will find the equilibrium temperature that the body should have based purely on the input of Kerbal. I took some more accurate inputs than last time for Leith, so this will give us a slightly different value, but very much similar. Note that the value you get at first from this equation is about 109 Kelvin for Leith, but as the atmosphere traps heat, I added the atmosphere constant of about 1.2 which means it is around the same as that of Earth, so also Kerbin, thus also Leith. And that is being generous, as Leith's atmosphere is less dense than Kerbin's, so it traps heat not as well as Kerbin would. So, as stated earlier, this is too cold knowing that Leith has liquid water, so there must be something else going on here, right? Well, as many, many of you have suggested, what about tidal heating? Out of all the possible solutions, this is the most probable one. So what is tidal heating? Whenever a body orbits another, it will experience something called a tidal force due to gravity, and both bodies will be deformed. Imagine a moon that orbits a planet in a not perfectly circular way. It has a non-zero eccentricity. Then you can imagine that when the moon is closer, that it experiences a stronger tidal force than when it's farther away. This change in force means a change in how much it is being deformed. So the moon is being squeezed and stretched as it orbits the larger planet. This squeezing and stretching causes friction. And this friction means the moon's insides are being heated. And this is what causes Io, a moon of Jupiter, to be so volcanically active. And this is also the reason for liquid water oceans beneath the icy surfaces of both Europa and Enceladus. To discover whether this heat source is enough to explain the liquid water on Leith, we need to calculate how much heat is being created. I read some papers on the ways one can calculate this very precisely, but in this video I'm going to use a very very simplified model, as the goal is to determine whether this is possible at all. This method grossly overestimates the influence of tidal heating. So if even this overestimate results in a temperature that is too low, then we know for sure that it cannot be tidal heating. I will put links in the description of papers that I found, and also a short file that contains the method that I used. There will also be a Python script that I made that shows all the values that I used and the equations. The input of this process will be energy over time. We want to know how much energy is put into the system over half an orbit. So we already know that t is one half times the orbital period. Watch out, this t is time and the other is temperature. So how much energy is being put into our system over half an orbit? Well, as the moon is being deformed, we can say that the tidal forces are doing work, which is an amount of energy. Work in this case can be expressed as the difference in force when at periapsis and at apoapsis, times the change in distance, which is how much the object is being deformed. We can then return to our equation at the start and add this input on the left hand side. This equation basically says that the input of both the star and tidal heating is equal to the output of the body in question, which has to be the case if the body has reached equilibrium temperature. A bit of rewriting and you will get something like this. Next I tried this method out on the real moons of Jupiter and Saturn, Io and Enceladus. The deformation of Io is on average 50 meters and I could not find this info for Enceladus, so I calculated it for both 10 meters and 100 meters of deformation to get a range of the temperatures. Plugging in all these values will give us temperatures on Enceladus that range from 81 Kelvin up to 135 Kelvin. The real average temperature is about 75 Kelvin. IO is a bit different, 
as it gave me a surface temperature of about 295 Kelvin, while the real value is around 110 Kelvin. I checked multiple times if this was correct, and it keeps giving me this. The only way I can explain this is that we assume with this equation that all the energy put into the system is being absorbed by the moon to then be re-emitted via black body radiation. And in the case of Io, a portion of the heat is being used towards active volcanoes and the heat from lava gets radiated right off into space. So that energy is lost. For Enceladus, I'm not sure. Anyways, let's just try this method on Lathe and see what it will give us. But we arrive at another problem. Lace eccentricity is actually zero, which would mean that it will not be squeezed and stretched. It will be deformed due to tidal forces, but it will not change, thus there will be no friction. But to leave it here after all this is just boring. So what if Lathe had an eccentricity of about 0.004, which is the same as Io's? Again, this is actually not the case, but we are trying to see whether it is even possible for Lathe to have liquid oceans, and an eccentricity of 0.004 is very much possible. So we can put these values in for Lathe and the temperature that it gives us ranges from 257 Kelvin up to 715 Kelvin, which is hot enough to melt zinc. Okay. As mentioned before, this method overestimates the effects of tidal heating, as we saw that this was also the case with Io and Enceladus. So all we can say for now is that it might be possible, but it will require some more digging to know for sure. I want to state what I did is very much a rough way of calculating the temperature as we made some assumptions and simplifications. I might take a more in-depth look into those papers to try and understand how those more accurate methods work exactly, and then we can try again maybe in the future. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you like seeing more physics and math being applied to Kerbal Space Program, then subscribe and watch some more.